already seeing like Necrophos now Tidehunter coming out as well. The Shadow Demon Kanka don't push waves. No. So now you have this issue of, okay, what cores can we solidify in our roster to make sure that we have that balance? Because a lot of the time you get caught in this one idea of saying, sure, the Shadow Demon, fantastic for saving, like you mentioned already against Reaper. You can make someone not have to exit the game, which is great. You got the boat buff for team fights. But two things, they're lacking damage and they are severely lacking the ability to kill creeps. Right. And that can come back to bite you real bad against what Team Secret have. Yeah, you just kind of get closed up inside your own areas. You end up getting kind of split pushed a little bit too much. You can't defend somebody, especially if you're looking at a lineup that is going to be pretty team fight focused, kind of stays a little bit of five man. I, I also see the combination here for Team Secret. They have a lot of pickoff potential, right? Yep. So if you combine a lot of wave clear with a lot of pickoff potential, and well, there's the answer. We've got a, a hero now for Team Empire that very quickly clears through waves, is able to do so sometimes with, with little risk, thanks to, to Manta, just throw your illusions down a wave, uh, and is also going to be able to deal somewhat with the Tidehunter in the laning phase. Uh, really helpful that you have this high damage Five nuke that uh, is magic damage to be able to threaten that Tidehunter. And not to mention, you know, having Lunar Blessing against Night Stalker is fantastic. Oh, yeah. Just straight up not having to worry about, okay, sure, if you cast Darkness, you're still going to have the vision discrepancy, but it's not going to hurt you as much to play against NS during the time where his ultimate's not up because you're not going to have, what is it, like 600 vision less or something ridiculous yeah. like that. It's, it's insane. It, it's super, super strong. So I think a, a very nice pick to round out what Team Empire currently have is their, their four heroes, obviously saving the mid pick for last. I imagine at this rate we're going to see another hero that can at the very least spam a tiny bit. And Team Secret pretty much looking for the same. I think Secret are a bit more open because their, their lineup feels very... It's just solid. You got Sustain and the Necrophos. You got some okay wave clear between the Necro and the Tidehunter. Maybe not the best, but you know it's, it's good enough. And then you can look to just pick whatever mid one feels is comfortable for this matchup. Yeah, I like... Uh... I like Secret's lineup a little bit more right now. I do really appreciate the way the Team Empire have set their lineup up, though, with the, the Shadow Demon both being as a counter to the Necrophos and providing a lot of synergy with the, the Luna, which counters, again, the, the Tide kind of Necrophos as well, and the, the Night Stalkers you're talking about with the Vision has some good synergy with the Faces Void as well. I feel like this, this lineup is like this really cool combination of both synergy with your own and being able to counter what the enemy is trying to do so far. But the big problem is going to be that they have to pick up their mid first here. They're actually going to be banning away the Templar Assassin. Uh, how are you feeling about Invoker right now? I feel like mm. it's, it's generally too slow of a hero for most lineups, but... But with a Kunkka SD, it's, it feels... Okay, it's, just, it's going to be the Queen. Yeah. A very, I guess you would say, standard pick nowadays. Yeah. It's just a strong hero. It, it offers good laning phase. It can TP gank at level 6 very easily. You know, you get that level 25, even though they keep nerfing it, that spell lifesteal is yeah. still insane. Offers you a tremendous amount of survivability. Very high impact hero most of the time. You can't really go wrong with a queen pick, I feel. No, certainly not. I think queen of pain, puck, like those two minutes, you're going to be seeing so much. Puck is banned, so instead we're going to be seeing a viper picked up by Team Secret. That will be our mid matchup. Not a fun one. For the Queen of Pain, that's for certain. It does feel like Team Secret's lineup, they pick three cores that are very uh, self-sustain heavy, are able to kind of sit in their lanes, not have to need the uh, the presence of the supports. I feel like Yapsor and Puppy are actually going to have a lot of freedom in this game to to be able to do whatever they want. You know, when they when they want to pull, where they want to gank, all those situations are very open to them simply because the the one on matchups, one on one matchups are good for everybody. Uh, for secret in this laning phase. It's going to be interesting because as much as you're saying the freedom that Yapsar and Puppy are going to have too, on the other side of it, you have Empire who still lack damage in the laning phase. Sure, Resolution is going to have that Lucent Beam, which does help a bit. But you're looking at Team Secret's lanes, you say to yourself, what lane do we kill? So mm -hmm. are they going to take the opposite approach and say, you know what, we'll stack some creeps. We got a Luna on our team. You know, eventually even Mapochka on the Shadow Demon, if he decides to skill Poison, he can kill stacks. FN can kill stacks as long as it's not Ancients. There's options to play it a bit more defensively. Because I feel if you're just running around two supports nowadays at the same time and you don't get anything done, it feels like you're so far behind straight away. So I'm kind of hoping that instead of Empire looking for kills nonstop with the Kunkka, I know, and maybe Roger still goes mid. Who knows? Yeah. But Mapochka at the very least, I feel... 
should probably just play this as greedy as he possibly can. Like, try to get to that level 6 really fast. And maybe he wants to go like the Soul Catcher build to help supplement their damage so they can burst these tanky heroes like MP on the Necro, the Tide Hunter. You know, all of Secret's heroes just have so much durability. Are you a prediction fan? I. Oh. Do you fiend the predictions? I don't fiend the predictions. All right, all right. Well, but you know, it's it's. I I usually leave it up to to the main caster because you know they get your camera anyway. We'll we'll skip over it for this. Uh... This okay. first round, just because I, I actually want to piggyback on something you said. I really like the fact that you brought up that when you roam with both supports right now, it feels like you just eventually fall behind. Yeah, And I think that's an important aspect of playing support right now is that you do emphasize a little bit in being able to find your own farm. Specifically, like the four position is going to run, run around and he's going to get a little bit under farmed and he's probably going to pick up that tome to kind of boost it up. But as that five position, the, the, the support that usually sits in the safe lane a little bit more, I feel like it is very important for you to be able to get off at least two or three poles in the first five minutes just to be able to get your own source of farm. Because it, I don't feel like you can play the super hard six position as much anymore. You, you need to have more of an impact as a support than you used to. It's really difficult nowadays. I, I think that position 5, especially like you mentioned, just having to do as much as you need to with so little. And sometimes just stacking can be enough. You know, in this type of game, Apushka's already what up here with interesting resolution. Interesting wraparound from Team C. Got a late smoke and a wraparound right as the bounty rune's about to come up. They go for the gush level 1 to try and beat down resolution here and are going to be able to push him back. They do manage to pick up said bounty rune. Uh, still gets traded though. Two for two, as in the bottom lane, Ghostick was able to uh, snatch that one away from MP's Necrophobe. So, Smoke Ink doesn't actually result in any sort of uh, first blood scenario, nor does it give them the bounty rune advantage. But uh, I'm wondering if Kezu's going to be a little unhappy with having Gush level one and not getting that first kill as he now, now no longer has Kraken Shell or Anchor Smash to be able to defend himself when the supports end up going on him, which is why it looks like Yapser is going to try and lend him a little bit of a helping hand. I would still say the situation favors Secrets slightly, just because they're able to keep both supports in lane all the time. You're making the support soak experience from the Luna. We talked about the lack of damage that Empire kind of has until FN gets his ultimate, until Resolution gets his ultimate as well, so we're talking about Sonic Wave and Eclipse. Those things are pretty much mandatory to be able to get kills, I feel. And when you're looking at a Tide Hunter and a Night Stalker in your lane, the Shadow Demon at level 1 can realistically only disrupt. Yeah. And then you hit a Torrent and you get like maybe a level 1 Lucent Beam or perhaps he... Yeah, he ended up skilling the Lunar Blessing. So that you get some damage from that, but is it enough to realistically kill unless Kezu or Yapso are very far out of position? Well, thank goodness for that pause. I got to look over at mid and all of a sudden FN was sitting at 90 HP. I'm not exactly sure how Puppy managed to make that happen, but FN's going to have to back out of the laning phase entirely here, pick up his healing self. He hasn't gotten a creep. Yeah. He, <laughs> he actually has no CS. He is so sad because he's already facing a Viper. Now he's facing a Viper when he's only half a level in, and Viper is two and a half, almost three. So this is already not a good matchup for the Queen of Pain, and he's going, he's going into this game with a terrible start. It is a little bit problematic. The cool thing about Queen is even if you're behind, you can always piggyback off of the idea of TPing and just counter ganking someone. Like yeah. that, that can be enough to bring your game back. You're gonna see a little bit of pressure being applied in the top lane onto Maposhka, but no real, no real kill potential. I just think that Empire have to play the waiting game. You need your ultimates. Absolutely. Or maybe, maybe not. Okay. They managed to find the kill on Yapsor in the top lane. I think he was tanking the pole camp a little bit when they managed to get the disrupt in the torrent on him. So just that little bit of added damage, Mapushka hitting two and being able to hit the soul catcher right on. Enough damage for the kill. Luna adds so much damage to your laning phase that yep. it's actually, you have to play that so careful. Even if you are Night Stalker and you've got so much starting armor and all that sorts of thing, you still have to be really careful just because the soul catcher combined with Lunar Blessing actually outputs ton of damage during that period of time you're locked down. It looks like they're going to try and do a full sandwich here onto FN. Night Stalker's kind of hanging around. I think mid wants seeing if he can get some poke damage, possibly forcing a, uh, a blink out of some sorts. There goes the blink, but unfortunately, Puppy, he went uh, expecting FN to go straight down. Might still be able to catch him, though. The Magic Missile he needs two shots here. One of them's going to be uphill. Does manage to hit that one. Still 10 HP. FN 
has a blink up in a second and will manage to get out. Yaps are unable to get that void off. Meanwhile, in the top lane, Kez is going to be gone on here. Body blocked by the Shattered Demon Illusions, brought back by the X, and Empire execute once again in the top lane. Really good for the tri of Empire to continually get these kills. It would be extremely unfortunate if they're sitting there with two supports this whole time and don't accomplish anything. So Mapashka and, and Roger are going to be more than happy about that. Sure, your queen is having a, a rough game. Let's. <laughs> I, to be totally honest with you, Cap, I have never seen this big of a CS discrepancy at three and a half minutes, ever. No. <laughs> Not in a... Actually, there was maybe one game where I think it was a Nyx versus an OD mid oh, no, a really no long stick. time ago. Yeah. What have you done? Time walk forward to try and get some damage on an MP, and now he almost gets punished for it. Fortunately, that second uh, Death Pulse doesn't manage to hit Ghostic and uh, does successfully hide his way into the trees. Kezu tried to do a little bit of neutraling there, but ends up getting interrupted. In fact, now he's going to be gone on Soul Catcher. Follow up into the X Torrent. They're going to be able to get a lot of right click damage, not even needing the disruption, which they still had at hand if he managed to survive through that initial jump. So. We're seeing an Empire that certainly has enough damage to be able to deal with the Tidehunter in lane. And as you said, good thing too. They're, uh, they're committing both supports up to the top lane, but it's working. For now, I think that it's important to note as a... You know, you play a lot of offline too, Cap, so you probably had the, like, these types of ideas as well. But I feel when you're playing a game like this, where the, the support duo has so much kill potential, yeah. that it's almost more beneficial for you to just eat the death and let your mid player win his lane. Yeah, I because agree. Because if you go off map and you start farming the jungle, the enemy supports sometimes either they'll rotate for you in your jungle or they'll go mid. You don't want them to go mid this game. You want mid one to keep doing what he's doing. He is 36 and 15. FN has five creep kills and one <laughs> deny. And honestly, if you're tight hunter at this point, any off laner that dies like the like two, three, four times in the first 10 minutes, it doesn't really matter. It does not them. matter. They're yeah. always going to make the comeback, especially farming off laners like Tidehunter, like Legion Commander. They're always going to get their, their opportunity to be able to farm up, and they're just going to get right back into the game so quickly because Viper it is definitely a space creator of sorts, right? He just pushes and pushes and pushes, and he forces the enemy team into fighting into a Viper, which means the Tidehunter is going to have his day to be able to farm up, get his items, get his mech, whatever he needs, and then turn into the, the offlane core that you expected in the beginning. Yeah, I, I think that it's... A lot of times you see these deaths and, and people say, wow, you're just dying all the time. And it, it feels bad to die in yeah. Dota. It really does. But in this case, for the greater good, FN's level 4. He's level 4. He was sitting in the jungle killing Ogre Neutral Camp. And he might just get dove here. Viper's already level 6, almost level 7. Uh, I'm not even sure if this Queen of Pain... If he gets too close and gets hit by Viper Strike, uh, you know, a Night Stalker could easily just run him down on the side, so he really has to sit super far back. Same kind of same thing kind of going in this bottom lane. Ghostic's having a little bit better time. He's uh, 22 CS in right now. That's very respectable for any offlaner, but he is getting kind of a 1v1 matchup. And it was, as we said kind of earlier in the drafting phase, it is uh, a favorable matchup for MP's Necrophos. Necrophos doesn't really lose in a side lane, I don't think. It is like really yeah. difficult to beat that hero on a 1v1. Especially once he gets to like level 5, you get the 3 points of the Death Pulse, the regen. It doesn't matter what hero you are, it just becomes a little bit too much. Yeah, you can't, there's there's like no hero that can threaten you constantly. Right. So eventually Necrophos is going to be able to get the CS to get whatever regen back he needs. FN does manage to get the deny on the tower just before Yapsor wraps around. Could have potentially caught him as he does have a 1-1-1 one, one, one build instead of the 2-0-1. Prioritizing the silence nice and early. We are going to have a TP coming in here. Roger is deep behind the tower and could be countered by TPs, but the first one in is Puppy. He immediately gets disrupted. Yapsor is going to wrap around from behind and manages to catch Roger, slowing him down, hopefully enough for his team. Yep, there goes the gush, and mid one will gladly take the kill. Not like he was far enough already. 58 and 18. Now he gets an extra kill to it. It's really cool the way that Secret played that because oh, they... The bottom. Okay. Nice setup by Resolution, but... MP does manage to get into the trees, and now they're going to have to throw down the Chronosphere as well. That's two really big, long cooldown ultimates to kill MP's Necrophos. I'm sure it's a little bit worth it, but you would much rather have just only had to use one there. Definitely preferable to not have to use both, but it, it kind of feels like if you... 
if you're gonna throw the eclipse, you may as well throw the chrono, because where's the damage if you just chrono sphere? And yeah. you know, resolution's ultimate isn't up. True. So I think the movement from Empire here is on point. They saw rotation towards their safe lane and they, they go, Okay, we don't really want to fight here against mid one's Viper right now. It seems a little bit risky. They showed they were willing to TP on the side of Secret because the mid tier one is dead on Empire. There's no reason really for a mid one to kind of sit mid anymore, so they're just looking uh, right now it looks like a pick. His mid one and puppy are currently smoked up, potentially looking for something. And they're kind of also waiting on Kezu to hit his six. So yeah. once that happens, I would imagine that Secret keep applying this tower pressure because that's what Viper does best. He hits the tower, and you look at a Viper and you go, well, he's probably going to get this kill here on Kunkka. Yeah, Roger, especially with the extra vision coming in from puppy. They just need one more shot, and they get it. So that may have signaled that they do actually have that aggressive mid board. Meanwhile, well. top lane, Kezu being chased down. Resolution does have the beam coming up. They managed to get vision for a second. Kezu diving into the trees, but is now in open field. Will be caught. The final nuke does manage to bring him down. So Kezu just seems to get very little respite. Uh, <laughs> just uh, constantly pressured. I have to say, though, I think Resolution's doing a, a fantastic job. Like, he read the fact that, hey, my mid laner, my, this Queen of Pain, who's normally the one moving around and creating space for you, not going to be able to do so. I need to create space for him, but I can't go to mid lane. Let me go bottom. You get that kill. He goes back up to top. They kill the Tidehunter again. They're pretty much doing the only thing they can that's available to them with their mid lane being so utterly shut out. Very reminiscent of the old era where we used to see a lot of safe lane gyros, and they would get level 6 or 7, and they would just instantly TP and try mm, yeah. to get a kill. So kind of bringing that logic into the, the newer age of the safe lane here, but still not really that big of an advantage in regards of overall net worth, even with the, I would say, pretty gigantic mid difference in overall CS. Obviously, Queen of Pain has a bit more flash farm potential. You got the scream, you can blink around, you can hopefully control the runes a bit. He does have his ultimate here, looking for MP. He's standing in a good position, though. This kill would be so big, Roger. They Ooh. are going to be able to Chronosphere. So they have the Torrent, they have the Sonic Wave if necessary, and it's probably going to be needed here. There's oh so my much turnaround God. potential as MP with the Cloak gets the turnaround, the Ghost Shroud into the Death Pulse, a huge heal with the Magic Wand helping out as well. That's the problem. You have to fully burst down a Necrophos from 100 to 0 because at this point in the game, Necrophos, if he gets that slight little window, it's such a, a big turnaround in HP. Right, because it's 50% extra with that heal, and then combined with the magic wand, you easily get at least 300 HP, which is like half a hero pool at most times. That is just ridiculous. They drop double ults, and he's at 70% health after the chrono wears off. Yeah. That's got to feel pretty bad for Empire right now. You look at that situation, you lost your tier 1 tower, you go for a kill on the safe laner, it doesn't work, you drop two ultimates. Kezus does have Ravage here. They, they see him and they just run. They're yeah. like, nope. They thought it was going to be a potential kill on Necrophos. Turns all. Have you been seeing some of the, the Necrophoses lately, by the way? I, I played a game with um, MP, who's been spamming it uh, a couple times here in pubs, and uh, Matumba Man as well. They've been getting Radiance, like second item. I think it has a lot to do with the fact that the hero just wants to deal damage by existing. Like, yeah. a lot of the time, you don't really scale Necrophos in damage. You typically scale him in, the, in survivability. So when you think of it that way, a hero that lasts a long time, Radiance is just going to be good on. And the hero benefits so much from just the healing potential of having, like, Death Pulse that sometimes gets you kills in team fights. You pop your Ghost Shroud, you're healing for just insane amounts. So I think there's a lot of synergy, more so with the new Necro than the old one. And you've got the, the Miss percentage as well. Roger, it's going to be gone on here. Void, Magic Missile should be a pretty easy cleanup kill for Team Secret. 3 to 5, 12 minutes in with a 3k gold lead, and towers are beginning to drop. Empire's losing a lot of map control very quickly. It's, now these cores are fully online. Necrophos has his uh, his big, big magic defense with Hood of Defiance, so he's got that shell. Viper is near unkillable. He's got 1500 HP with maxed out corrosive skin, so magic damage does nothing to him either. And Tide, classic Tide, even if he doesn't have the levels or the farm, can kind of just sit in the front. He's got Ravage. We'll pop it when they end up going on him. So pretty much all towers are seem to be going uncontested. I don't think Empire can actually stand against that. All they can do is just push the other side of the map. They need the kitchen sink. They, they just need to dump <laughs> everything. I think it's almost more... Oh, they have a sentry down here mid. Yeah, they do. They did manage to catch Kezu here, but Yapsor is already out. 
Good TP from Roger. There's no way that Kezi wants to blow Ravage just to kill a support here. Yeah, nice read of the situation there. But I was going to mention, I think they want the Kunkka to hit 6, because they actually need boat damage. They need damage so badly that their support Kunkka needs to hit 6 before they take a team fight. <laughs> like, that is that is a rough situation. We're going to be seeing yeah. Pipe most likely finished on the Necro at some point. Looks like he's going back right now for just the uh, the Rod of Atos. But... Oh, I love that item. Yeah, I it's, love it. It's fantastic. Disruption, Soul Catcher, but the Tidehunter's here. They're going to try and burst down Puppy. They do have the Ravage available. Kezu's going to hold on to it, though. The FN blink out just in time. MP TP down to the Shrine, meanwhile, and is going to be able to find Maposhka. And that's a uh, guaranteed kill. Reaper Scythe is successful in bringing him down, so a little bit of extra death timer as well. Necro, man, what a hero. You cast all your abilities, and if you get the kill, you're back at full mana anyway. Yep. It's as if nothing ever happened, Cap. Yeah, you just gotta keep running around and keep killing things. Oh, it's so hard to play with that, play against that hero, just because you you have to commit to being able to fully kill him. And if you don't, he's just gonna farm up and get up to full HP. Whether he gets a hero kill or a bunch of creep kills, he just kind of goes and goes and goes. He's an energizer, buddy. It was the perfect pick for the situation as well. Like Secret read the draft perfectly from even. The second to third pick, they just realized, hey, if we if we have super strong lanes, Empire are gonna really struggle until they have all their ultimates. Gonna see a big fight here, though. Roger, trying to get up to his shrine, they're just gonna leave him behind. Oh he's, yeah, he's not gonna activate it. He knows it's a waste. He knows he's mega dead. You run into that many heroes of Team Secret at this point in the game, there's no fighting it. You just have to go somewhere else, and that's exactly what they do. Resolution goes to push out top, and we have uh, our faces void. Ghostic pushing out, away at bottom. This is the ideal situation, I think, for Empire, is if you get away with just losing a support and you're allowed to have cores on opposite sides of the map hitting creeps, that's about as optimal as it gets, given yep. your start. So now it's going to be, do we fight the Roche or do we choche to fight the Tier 3? It can be pretty dangerous to go into a Roshan fight against Secret, given their lineup and like the sustain of having MP. You have the, the saving mechanisms, although Puppy is not quite 6, he's very close. I'm really curious to see how Empire decide to go about that. Do they do they actually want to contest Roche with all of their ultimates, or do they say, High Ground's the best shot we got? Well, it looks like Secret aren't going to give them much of a choice here. Because the, the cores are on the sidelines, they're going to force High Ground here, see if they can actually force the cores back. And it becomes, in a way, a game of chicken to see if you can successfully force the cores back as you attempt to go High Ground, or if you're going to be caught trying to play a little bit too over-aggressive. They do manage to force most of them back. Resolution stayed up in that top lane with his Mask of Madness. Gonna hide in the trees and wait for another opportunity to push out top. Meanwhile, Empire are looking for a chance at a pickoff. Unfortunately, this torrent isn't gonna land on Puppy and Secret do protect themselves enough not to bleed any hero kill. They really gotta make sure of that. Oh, well, I guess it wouldn't be that big of a deal if they lost the support. I was gonna say because they're like 5, 7k up, but they're actually they're only not. probably 2k. Resolute, uh, I don't, how are they doing this, Draskal? Okay, so the biggest thing about Viper, and this happens a lot, and he has one of the biggest stigmas of win the lane, lose the game. You know, that, that <laughs> yeah, used to be yeah. the saying, right, for Viper, because what he does is he sits in the lane, he's very hard to deal with in the first maybe 10 to 15 minutes, but what happens nowadays is that you start transitioning out of sitting there and just being this unkillable flying snake into killing towers. And when you're running around the map with your team, you're not hitting creeps. They're gonna drop a chrono on mid. They're gonna get this kill on Kezu as well, so that means no Ravage. He's up in about 30 seconds. Not sure if Empire are gonna pursue this, but this happens a lot to heroes that dominate the lane that don't have flash farming capabilities. So like yeah. Razor and Viper and these other heroes. The enemy mid has wave clear, and you don't. So eventually they just get creeps. You're running around the map with your team hitting buildings. And this is why like the, the Ludo is such a great pickup, right? Because it does clear through waves so efficiently as a carry. Our Queen of Pain is beginning to, to pick things back up. He's sitting at 5,800 right next to MP at 6k. Like, things are beginning to look okay for Empire. They are going to have this awkward timing, though. They just blew Chronosphere, and, uh, well, I guess that's the only long cooldown ultimate. It's just Chronosphere. Tidehunter is back up, so we'll see if Secret want to force a fight somewhere. I'd say that's probably the optimal Chrono. If you can get Kezu and prevent a swap, that's the best initiation I think you're ever going to get. <laughs> They're just going to go again. Apparently Kezu's just not going to be able to get his Blink Dagger that he's so close to. I kind of want him to just go back to the Creep Wave and see if he can get it, but oh. it's not going to happen. Soul Catcher and gets brought down. 
Did you mean mech, by the way, when you I, said blink? I did. I did. I was going to say, Sorry. I was like, I didn't know if I was looking at the wrong hero or what. I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> I was literally still looking at him for like the last 30 seconds leading up to that gank, and I was like, all right, let's talk about mech and how that's going to add so much. Blink just came right out of my mouth. The synergy is insane with their lineup. Like, the, you can tell what their game plan is. They just want to try to be able to five men. But Empire, slowly but surely, they're pulling it back. They're splitting up the map. They're making sure that Resolution has all the space in the world. If he wants to come to a team fight when they have Chrono up, I think that's probably their best odds. And just making sure you have the lockdown. The damage is up now. They have everything at their disposal. They have the Sonic Wave. They have the Eclipse, the boats there. I think the next big hurdle for Secret is just getting the waves out enough and feeling comfortable to really pressure the next objective. Because they still got Tier 2 in the safe lane. They got Tier 2 in the bottom lane as well on the side of Empire. So they haven't really lost all sense of map control. If they're able to be out and about, they're still in it. And these, uh, I want to talk about these Mask of Madnesses, uh, both for the Luna and the Faceless Void. I, I feel like it's such a perfect item, not just for these heroes, but also for the situation they were in, where they were they were down by so much and they needed to just be able to split push and kind of farm away. It's such an efficient farming item for, for its cost, the damage and, and the way you're able to just clear through creeps very quickly, especially for Luna, but Faces Void as well. I say Ghostic has kept up his farm pretty admirably, despite the fact that he's been looking, running around looking for kills and hasn't succeeded most of the time. I completely agree. I think the Mask of Manus choice is pretty optimal. On Luna, you see it a, a lot more, I think, than on the Void. But you can just think of it as, it's kind of like a mini Midas. Yeah. You know, you're just getting so much value out of the item as time goes on. You're able to stay at a high amount of health. You don't have to show on the lane all the time. Allows you to neutral. The item is kind of at that stage where we're almost 6.83 again. Where you just want to buy it because it's so freaking good. Yeah, I like that. Especially since neutraling feels uh, kind of meh sometimes. Yeah. Like, if you're just a hero that takes too long to neutral, it's just not worth it. But Mask of Madness makes it super fast for especially the heroes like Faces Void, who would normally be quite slow at it. Kind of setting up here in the bottom lane. They're all sitting behind, or most of them, are sitting behind FN. Queen of Pain as he pushes out bottom lane. Secret are not going to be taking the bait here. They're actually going to move out to the top lane, go straight towards the Roshan pit. They have successfully read Empire's movement. That is a Deso Viper. Yeah, that's uh... You do not see that very often. That's one way to push high ground. <laughs> I mean, it's it's also a nice way to be able to kill Roche a little bit faster, because yeah. they don't have a medallion, I don't believe. Yeah, because Yepsor went for the force stuff. He went for an item that's going to allow, you know, maybe you force out of a torrent bolt combination to save somebody. Right. And the pipe is finished now on MP, so this this feels to me like Secret want to go now. Or, you know, maybe they TP, uh, TP back to defend first, and then they try to go for an objective after the fact. But this is, you know, Empire are definitely applying the pressure even still. I don't know if the Aegis is going to be enough. Secret apparently are not going to want to give up this tier 2 tower. I thought they might just go down mid and give up the tier 2, but instead they're going to fight. And maybe Empire might not expect that. Maposhka is going to be set up here for the potential disruption, but they leave it. Yule Scepter is going to be able to save him. Ravage goes off the side, going to be able to cut down two. Reaper Scythe managed to catch the Queen of Pain before she managed to get out. They do manage to get the Shadow Demon and the Queen of Pain at the end. 60 seconds on the clock for that Queen of Pain. So, Secret do have an opportunity to maybe abuse that timing for an objective, but they also have to deal with Resolution, who's very rapidly turning into a, a farm machine. He's pushing out all the waves. He now has both the Mask of Madness and the Manta, and it just managed to take the mid-tower, even if it was a deny from Kezu. That little movement from Resolution finally took an objective for Team Empire, an important one at that. He's been very good at reading the map this game. He's pretty much always been in the right spot at the right time, hasn't died at all. I mean, sure, his lane, you could say, was pretty easy. He had a tri-lane versus essentially a solo tide, but just his movement, keeping the lane pressure up. As a core player, especially a Luna in this game, that's it's a necessity. Like, you need to pressure the lanes. If you yeah. don't, and Secret are able to walk to your Tier 3 with two out of three lanes pushed out in their favor, that's bad news. Yeah, and you could see Resolution. He knows they can't quite defend yet, so he's going to try and take the Tier 2 in exchange for all the damage that's happening on the Tier 3. Now, he's going to be able to take that objective a whole lot faster than Secret's currently doing. But the reward, if Secret can actually finish up this Tier 3, is so much greater. But Resolution's just going to keep on pushing. They're going to see if they can hold without Resolution here. And it looks like the Disruption is definitely going to do a lot of work in being able to protect that. Uh, oh, Ghost Stick out with the Shadow Blade. Was in a position to throw down a Chronosphere. 
They're right next to the shrine too, which would make an easy TP for the Luna. They're gonna wait for heroes to try and leave and maybe catch something or not. TP out, Ghostic doesn't choose to take that opportunity to go for a Chronosphere on anybody. Backs away and uh, Empire will continue to play kind of the, the keep away game. I think, I think they're just really wanting that BKB on resolution. I think it's a huge game changing item. And I also think the reason that Ghostic didn't Chrono there is because he was sitting behind where the shrine is near the ramp and Yapsor popped darkness. So he I don't think he actually had vision of Kezu's TP. I think oh, it was yeah, like barely, true. like barely couldn't see him. Because otherwise, you definitely chrono that. Because it stops the tide TP. He yeah. was the first one to TP in, which means resolution could have potentially gotten a tier three. That yeah. thing took like what, forty percent damage, maybe a little bit less. Yeah, it took a quite a good ship. And he's also probably not feeling comfortable with like his position there. Like, you know, what if they do have He was walking back and vision? forth, yeah. Yeah, it's game losing. If you die it's a void there, right? So, definitely one of those situations that there was an opportunity for high reward, but there was also a lot of high risk involved with him being positioned there. And, uh, oh, Miposhka actually aggressive force that from Yapsor. Puts him in a bad place. The Reaper Scythe is not going to finish him off quite yet, but they do manage to get the right clicks in. But now they're fully committed. The Chronosphere onto two. Kenzo counters the Chronosphere with the jump in with his own Ravage. Do has managed to get off the Sonic Wave, but it doesn't matter. There's too much sustain from Team Secret. Empire get back to their Shrines, popping two, but it's still not enough. They have to back away even further as the Shrines can't heal him up enough. And Secret are able to beat now onto that melee Rax. Resolution's finally here, but it's a bit too late. The Rax is already gone, but Poshka's back in it with the disruption. Lead on onto mid one, cost him his life again just to be able to get that out. But with the sustain offered by MP, Secret, they seem invincible. Empire just don't really have a good way to go on anybody now. They have no Chronosphere, no Sonic Wave. Resolution by himself can't possibly kill these heroes. Well, they can only get one Rax because they have tier twos in the other lanes. The unfortunate part about that whole situation. Okay, so first resolution, he had enough money to buy his BKB. But when you're in these types of situations where the enemy team is pushing a tier 3, you don't want to TP like 10 feet, right? Yeah. It just feels like such a waste because you know you have to get out of base again and immediately be able to push out lanes. And you need your TP to get out of that. So you need to save it. And because of the force staff forward killing the Shadow Demon, it kind of made Gostik feel like he needed to chrono mm -hmm. to try to make something happen. But there was just no damage because Aluna wasn't there. So it made it look a lot easier than it probably should have been for Secret to just waltz up and, and take that. Because if the Luna had been there, they get the damage out, the Eclipse, they probably kill at least one person before the Chrono ends. Yeah. And if that happens, you know, we could have seen a completely different fight. But when you're, you're down a person and mid one still has that Aegis in his inventory, it's a lot more daunting to walk in with no Chrono and no Sonic Wave. Yeah, for sure. I mean, if you can actually kill, say... Like, say you kill MP, then boom, there goes all that sustain. You can't actually man fight as resolution against the Viper. If you kill the Viper, then there goes a lot of the damage. But unfortunately, both those cores staying alive kind of makes a, a duo that is too formidable for resolution for now. But he is that big late game farming core, and he is beginning to get out of control. He's working towards the butterfly next. 26 minutes in his farm is pretty respectable, sitting at 15k. The Viper at second. Sitting only 14k, despite uh, all of the various uh, objective gold that they managed to pick up. He's actually going for an AC, which I think is a great choice. Bolster up against the uh, inevitable physical damage that's going to come from the Luna. Speaking of Luna, she's going to back straight into this smoke. What a terrible position. Secret, they take advantage of it. They need to be able to jump forward and slow down resolution somehow. They throw out the Ravage. They say it's worth it just to be able to get this core, but it gets off the BKP, so the Reaper Sight's not going to be enough. Can he actually output the damage to kill anybody here? Not even close, and he doesn't have his ultimate either, so even if he buys back, the threat is just not going to be as real. Team Secret are still limited by those tier twos. They're going to have to deal. They're going to go up to the top lane to try and push that one out so they can actually force up buyback from the Luna. It's a tremendous amount of pressure that Secret have been applying basically since minute zero. A lot of it you could go back and say, sure, if FN didn't have such a struggle of a laning phase, maybe they could have impacted the game a bit more. But you have to still say Empire's recovery in regards of overall net worth was admirable. Like, they overcame one of the biggest mid discrepancies I think I've ever seen to bring FN. Like, he's not top of the net worth, but he's in a really good spot considering the circumstances. And yeah. the unfortunate part is Resolution popped everything before he died. So now this defense is going to be, I don't want to say impossible, but it's certainly not going to be easy. No BKB, no Eclipse, no point buyback, that's for sure. And it seems like uh, Secret are going to... 
led up on that push. Spent a little bit more time farming. We've got uh, some big items coming in. Looks like the Reaper Scythe is going to be... Uh, Reaper Scythe, Jesus. Aghanim Scepter to upgrade the Reaper Scythe. It's going to be coming in pretty soon for MP. That uh, Assault Kuros is also a huge upgrade. The Roger and Empire do manage to come forward here. They get the X onto the Viper. Is this really the hero they want to go on? Not really. They got a Pauken and Prod. They do manage to get the Chronosphere. They're swap back down the clip, but they are going to be able to blow up at least one here. Now MP, the next target does pop. A little bit of ethereal to help him against this physical damage. Resolution puts forward. He's already on to half HP. It's getting a little dangerous. They need to try and finish up MP. The Reaper Scythe goes down, but the BKB is still up just barely. Resolution gets away, turns around, gets a little bit more damage out, and now it's just a full-on chase for Empire. Finally, they've won a team fight, and they need to catch as much as they possibly can to make this all worth it. Looks like Kazu is eventually going to go down here. There's no real escape for him. So they're going to be able to get three kills off of that team fight, a huge swing to the favor of Empire, but if they're not careful, they may actually lose a hero of their own here. The apps are unable to get off the silence though against Lincoln. Uh, that was a very, very good timing for Empire because they didn't have Ravage yet. So, like if Ravage was up for that fight, you saw the way that Kezu blinked in. Yeah. He he had really good positioning if he had his ultimate off cooldown, but unfortunately it just wasn't the case. So they were able to take out MP. And I didn't really think about this before, but Time dilation destroys Necro. Oh, it does. Like you wanna, yeah. you wanna cast Death Pulse a lot during team fights. It's only a five second cooldown, and that's before the the talents that let you lower it a little bit more if you choose to. I think it's his 25. Yeah, so like by one second. There's not really a, a good like if he gets Lotus Orb, he removes the time dilation, but it doesn't really do a whole lot else, right? There's not yep. any huge single targets that you're gonna be blocking away. You can't. Re you don't want to go BKB because it affects your Ghost Shroud. It's kind of like a, just not a real good winning scenario for MP. He's just kind of always going to be screwed over by that. You just want someone else. Like maybe, you know, Puppy gets it. Maybe Yapsor eventually yeah. buys one. But he does also have a Glimmer in his inventory on top of that. So they have methods of saving. And it took a lot to take down MP. Even, oh, they're going to catch Got FN him. here. He does not have the silence, though. Obviously, to throw the silence down to block the Lincolns. They are going to be able to get the swap back, though. So maybe they can Ooh. kill a Mule Scepter. And a blink. Not forward. To the other side? No. At least you can say. <laughs> Gonna be looking on the bright side for Empire. He didn't get Reaper Scythe. He didn't get Reaper. He also managed to dodge the Viper Strike and the stun with a single Yule's cast. That was uh, definitely cool to see. But yeah, you're not getting away from that. That's, that's just troublesome. But in the meantime, another Roshan sneak. This time it's going to be from the side of Empire. They're not killing it super fast, but they have a tier 2 in the bottom lane. So if Secret were to contest this, they needed to be here a little while ago. Yeah, the exchange is not that bad, right? They I'd say it's actually main, better, but, yeah. to be honest. Because, okay, you have an Aegis on Resolution. He can just go in, you know, YOLO, doesn't have to pop his BKB. And then, Jeez, as well. Yeah, this is, this is a... So I would say they don't win. get caught. Yapsort here does manage to stop Mboshka. That's one. Go stick. Looks like uh, his Shadow Blade is going to be enough to get him away. Just barely, though. Making the best of a bad situation. I gotta say, Empire... Again, the lanes were not ideal. And when I say not ideal, I mean they, they got trounced <laughs> in the lanes. Like, they really did. Sure, you killed Kezu yeah. like three or four times. That's, you know, kind of expected if he keeps showing in lane. But the way that they're holding off, given how bad the early game was, a lot of teams would have crumbled to that pressure. Yeah, it's amazing what they've managed to accomplish. The so little move. The little room to maneuver in this map. Yeah. They just... We're able to farm up a lot of space for resolution. They just kind of created it, created. They got a couple of very key kills with their combination. Chronosphere and uh, Eclipse or Chronosphere. Secret are beginning to stall out a little bit. They still have, I think, all the mechanisms. Oh, he actually changed it up. No Aghanim Scepter for MP he actually goes for the Force Staff instead. And just has a uh, value point booster for now. It's a solid choice. If you looked at the way the last fight went, when he got chronoed, he uh, still met, he still died, Like, at, but well after the chrono dissipated. So giving himself an additional save and not having to be completely reliant on getting swapped out, I would say is still a pretty big deal. Mm -hmm. 
supporting cast have? Uh, Puppy hasn't actually upgraded into Solar Crest, picked up drums, and is now looking at a Ghost Scepter. Uh, our Night Stalker has that Glimmer Cape Force Staff that we saw earlier and is going for the Halberd up next. See if he can stop the Luna. I think I really like the, the new change of the Halberd and the, being able to disarm before BKB, especially since you know with uh, a hero like Night Stalker, you can actually move pretty far forward and get that Halberd off. Right. That also helps remove uh, Lincolns, which means he could get a silence onto the uh, Queen of Pain easier. Halberd's just a ridiculously efficient item in and of itself. Like, before, people didn't buy it because, like you said, it, it wouldn't linger. Th oh, a complete whiff from Ghost Stick! That is a game loser right there. The silent swap back. Ghost Stick's going to die for his sins and pay the extra punishment of the Reaper Scythe as well. So I'm not... He, they didn't have a high ground ward either, right? Like, they didn't no. get dewarded or anything? He, he yeah, just, there's, there's no sentries. He just went for it. That is... Ooh, that is aggressive, to say the least. Yeah, it's very unfortunate. He just... He saw them, like, farming up the, when the creeps pushed it. He saw the heroes in the position, and he was like, this is my opportunity to be able to catch the tide plus one. Right. And then... It, it happens, you know, every yeah. once in a while, you, you think you have, like, this play opportunity, and you go in, and it just doesn't quite go the way that you want it to, so... I actually... Oh! No. Oh, close. Almost stops the... Uh, yeah, but not quite. I can't imagine the, the pressure it must be, because... I mean, Jessica, you you know, you, like, you played initiators, right? There's a lot yeah. of pressure on you it's rough. to get the big ultimate. You, like, you, your team can't guide you in that regard. You just have to, like, kind of trust your instincts and go for it. That's already a lot of pressure in regular games. I can't even imagine the pressure of playing TI and playing an initiator like that. I wouldn't want to do it. <laughs> yeah, me I mean, either, man. Well, well maybe. I think maybe it's... Yeah, I'll take the money. I think it's important to remember why you have to initiate the fights. I think that's what makes it... Like, the, the great initiators, because they understand how their team functions. So in this case, Resolution walks up to a tower, he gets disrupted, he pops his Manta, they get free chip damage. In that game, the Void doesn't have to go first. Yeah. The Void can wait. Because if you are sieging with Shadow Demon Illusions, those things are crazy tanky. Resolution's got Butterfly. Like, look at how long it takes. He just walks him into a full creep wave and two heroes. And they're still alive. Like, yeah. this is why he doesn't, the Void doesn't have to go in. Because they can continually do this over and over and over again. And sure, they're not as good against towers as they used to be, but it still deals damage. Funny how the, the creep wave, when looking at these tower defenses, normally they're helpful, but in these situations, it's almost bad. It's really bad. Just because the, the illusions sit on the whole Nice swap back into the Reaper's sight. It's just going to be the Aegis, though. And Empire are all set up, ready to go with the Chronosphere. BKB popped immediately. They're going to go for the Eclipse. They do manage to catch Viper with the Chronosphere. They're going to try and bring him down anyway with the boat and the full combination of the Sonic Wave as well. They will manage to kill one core, but now they've caught Resolution underneath the Tier 3. Kezu throws down the Ravage, only catches the one there. Uh, but it looks like they are going to be able to chase down a couple more heroes. But Poshka, he's certainly dead. And uh, looks like that will be all. The rest of Empire are able to get out. So that costs him an Aegis, plus the death on Resolution, which is going to stall up his farm a little bit. And they didn't manage to finish up either Tier 3, which would have been a huge swing if you can unlock those shrines and give yourself even better opportunity to control that Roshan pit in other areas. The most unfortunate part about the team fight for Empire is mid one didn't have buyback. Like, if, yeah. if they had managed to get out of there, and the, the Ravage hit Resolution at such a perfect time that he couldn't get off the cheese. If he popped the cheese, there was turn potential because his entire team was behind him. But as soon as the Luna drops, you no longer have that really durable front line. You can't afford to be sitting there anymore. So they kind of just lose, you know, one or two extra heroes on top of that. So it gives Secret a bit of breathing room. But that, that mid tower is basically dead to rights. If, if Empire walk down mid again and they're able to get to that tower without Secret taking something other uh, somewhere else on the map, it's going to die. And I still think that, like you mentioned earlier, there are a lot of nerves. Because most of the time, you know, maybe Resolution just wanted to use his uh, his Aegis. And maybe that's why he walked up to the high ground. But with a Shadow Demon, it's been a while since people have played this hero a lot competitively. But you don't actually need to walk to the high ground. You can just Illusion Siege forever. And if the enemy team doesn't have a way of jumping you reliably, they will just eventually get whittled down. Sustains good As a result, Secret... Managed to win that fight. They're up by 6k, but...
they are not really having the same control of the game they once had. 6k gold lead is nothing at this point in the game, especially in, when you're facing such strong scaling heroes like Luna and Faceless Void. You're beginning to get some bigger items, we say uh, the Shivas, for example, on FN. He was looking at a BKB earlier, uh, but opted for the Shivas instead. Kind of help out against some of that physical damage and minus armor coming out from the Viper. Our faces Void with the Diffusa Blades, some huge upgrades and damage. They are going to find a free pick off here on Roger. But, and again, free pick offs really aren't just free pick offs when you've got uh, a Necrophos on your team and he adds that full 30 seconds to your death timer. This is actually painful because he can't buy back. Because the mid wave is pushing in, they're going to be able to just walk top. It doesn't matter if, you know, the creep wave, or there's two or three waves on the way to secret space, they don't care. Like, they're just going to sit here and hit the building. They are going to keep going on resolution, see if he can Radiant maybe trade, as attack. he's going to run his illusions to the tier 3 at mid lane. And once he opens up that tier 3, it's really easy to cut down those barracks. So they can actually just trade. I think they could even go like 1 for 2 if a secret don't actually back oh, up the TP here. Got the TP got cancelled. Viper ends up getting caught in the Chronosphere. Ghost is going to back out. They don't get a kill out of that one, but they do stop the TPs, and that means MP oh is completely God. undefended. Red Resolution just brought him down. It's actually going to be able to take a full lane of racks here. The TPs are slow to come through, and Resolution will take those two down. He's going to make it out. KB TP oh. out, and he's away! Just like that, MP bought back and everything, but he didn't even have the Reaper Scythe up, even if he was there, to stop that TP. What a huge play. They lost a Tier 3, but they killed two Tier 3s and took a full lane of Rax for Empire. They and for forced a buyback. Yeah, they forced a buyback out of MP. He TP'd in the front. He got Soul Catcher Eclipsed. He just got evaporated. You can't pop Ghost Shroud against that. Like, you just die. That was an insanely good TP cancel. I'd say if that doesn't happen, there's no feasible way that Empire are able to play that the same way. As soon as they saw that TP, they were probably just like screaming, we cancel the TP, just go, just hit the buildings. Mm -hmm. Force them back. Luna, probably, I would say the fastest base killing hero in the game, if yeah. you have the tier 3 exposed. Like Tiny does a ton of damage to one building, but Luna just hits all your buildings at the same time. Yeah, just <laughs> as soon as the tier 3 is gone, all of a sudden it's like something's just unlocked. And then Luna yeah. just hits one building and it bounced all these other buildings. And uh, as a result, Resolution... I mean, would you agree with me here, Jaskal? Empire's ahead. Empire's oh, I, winning I would now. definitely say they are ahead. They were in such a bad scenario in the first 10 minutes of the game. Okay. And they brought it back go. to their favor. And they're going to get a swap back. Maposhka, he's dead. And he doesn't have buyback. So Empire, once again, loses a support who doesn't have buyback. Fortunately for them, no Roshan is up. Not yet, anyway. Their strongest heroes are still up, and they have buyback on both of them. So, Gostic will be able to buy back if he ends up going down in Silver Resolution. Uh, 25 seconds on the TP, that's actually still a bit of time for the Luna, but they are going to make their way towards bottom regardless. Mid is also exposed, so we could see a potential base trade, because Empire know that Secret have pretty much all of their ultimates while well, they're going to be up. Necro is like 30 seconds left on Reaper, so if they defend, they're probably going to be fighting into it. I don't know if Secret really want to do this. Yeah, they're TPing back. They, they do not. I love the fact that Resolution is, is in so many of these situations not TPing back. I, I think it is the potential death of Empire if they ever just say, okay, we're going to five-man defend our base. Yeah, that's you, that's probably the thing that has been winning them the game, to yeah. be honest. Every single one of these situations, right, they're going high ground. Resolution's like, I'm going to take a tier two. Yeah. Right. I'm going to keep going. I'm going to keep farming. Because... That's the only way. You have to put a threat on the board somewhere. You can't just take the, the fight the enemy team wants to take. I think that's a really important point. Like, if you want to take anything away from this game, especially as a carry player, you can stay in the lane for, like, an extra minute or two as long as you don't TP back to base. Because sometimes that just puts you in the position to apply the pressure that's necessary. You have to force the enemy team to do something. Dota's all about pressure. If you're not pressuring anywhere, you're not winning the game. X just to make sure that Luna gets that illusion and gets out safely. See, the vision is a little bit better for Team Secret, being that they have Night Stalker and that, plus they have the gem. Here we go. But we are going to have the uh, smoke up wraparound from Empire. Dude, look at those illusion runes just demolishing. Like, they're so good. Like, one Manta pop and one illusion rune, you have two lanes pushing at the same time. Mm -hmm. 
Let's see, they did see Viper up there. Ports the secret shot, but they gotta try and cut up there to fight into that area. They got vision. They got vision around this area, so it feels a whole lot better. Nighttime is gone as well. Stick on the front lines. He's going to be able to get the Chronosphere onto two. The CMP, they go for him first. Throw out the Sonic Wave. Unfortunately, Resolution got caught at the tail edge, but it doesn't look like it matters at all. The two in the Chronosphere both end up dead, and it looks like they're going to get Yapsor as well. That's going to be a gem dropped, an Empire in full offense no mode against three heroes with no buyback. Oh my god. I, Roshan's up, so I think they're going to go for the safe play. It makes sense, because yeah. they, they probably feel like they're ahead at this point. They're like, okay, our heroes are online, our loon is gigantic, they don't have anything to deal with this. As long as the Chrono hits at least one hero, it's like, okay, yeah, if Puppy swaps, you're gonna die, but Puppy still has a fair amount of items, you know? It's not like, it's not nice to lose your revenge in the beginning of the team fight. But a really nicely placed Chrono from Gostick there, makes up for the little bit of a snafu he had earlier. He hits the core and the Venge at the same time, that's perfect. That's exactly what you want. And it's all thanks to that smoke that they had. And they pushed through mid, got the vision down. It's not a, a hugely tricky play, just solid fundamentals by Empire. And now they have the potential to end this game right here. 20 seconds still for the Necropost gone. They do have a little bit of problem dealing with this Viper, oh but the Illusions have no problem at all. They don't have to worry about their HP. They just keep on pushing forward, getting damage, chipping away and both the Viper as well as that range Rax. They've got time, plenty of time with this Aegis. X and a Torrent, but no Chronosphere to lock down that Tidehunter, and I think that's really where Empire need to bide their time. They can actually have the Chronosphere up again, and if they get the right kind of initiation, I think the game just is over for Team Secret. I don't think you can fight anymore. It could be. It could very well be that. The MKB on mid one has been enough to force them back. The combination of having the Butterfly and the Illusions on top of that was really annoying because they didn't have any reliable way to bypass the, the evasion. But now that the Viper has that MKB, and he's got the Hurricane Pike plus the extra 75 attack range, which you don't really see a whole lot, but when you're on the defense, it feels like the better choice because you can stay, you know, the farther away you can be as Viper, the better while still hitting somebody. I think he's probably the last Bastion that Secret has for this defense, because MP had a fantastic lane. He crushed it, right? But he he can only do so much now. If he's chronoed every single team fight, and he's eating like a Soul Catcher and an Eclipse, you can't really do anything about it if you can't buy BKB, right? Yeah. Which we already talked about earlier. You don't typically want to buy BKB on Necro. Yeah, because you can't actually use Ghost Shroud, so... Very awkward. And just look at the lanes. Like, top lane, there's just illusions already. Yeah. Just Mid beating down the creeps. Mid one actually ferried himself out uh, a salve just so he didn't have to go all the way back to Fountain because he wanted to push out top lane because he knew that, like, they're just going to get hemmed in. Right? So he goes and he's like, every little second counts. I need to push out this top lane. But even that little bit of extra effort by him is immediately re uh, just reversed by the fact that Resolution is able to have uh, his Manta Illusions push out that top lane. Now Secret are actually pushed in on all three of their lanes. They've got double Siege Wagon beating on their mid racks right now while the Illusions push in through bottom. This is the absolute ideal situation for Empire. Got everything going their way. Now can they just close that out? Here comes the BKB Chronosphere. They're going to be able to get the Viper, but eh, there's a little bit of a ravage there. Does manage to control some heroes, but not the BKB resolution. That is a big threat. And that's why the Titan almost dies to him. But fortunately, the Swap Back manages to save one core, and Titan are tanky enough to live through the other one. But the Raxes just cannot be saved, it looks like. The oh. Glyph provides a momentary respite, but the Bouncing Glaze are going to rip from shreds, as well as the heroes in the back lines. MP is still having problems with them, and resolution goes straight for the throat. He wants to finish up this last mid lane of Rax to get the Megas down. They manage to get Kazu here into the Torrent. Resolution does just a little bit of damage to finish him off. He looks like he'll lose his life finally, but that's just the ages. They do manage to bring down the Void. Maybe with a supporting cast, can they bring down Resolution? They just can't quite catch up to him. Maposhka gets caught out. Mid one managed to finish him off, but they really need this Resolution kill so badly. Torrent onto two. Beautiful play there from the Kunkka that's going to slow down a lot of these heroes, but it's Resolution, finally gets cut by the Gush, immediately reverses that slow with a Manta, and they give up on the chase. Yes, Secret held ever so barely with just a range Rax at 400 HP, but they didn't get anything big that changes the nature of the game for them. And even with those two heroes dead on the side of Empire, there's no Roshan. And now they got to push the lanes out. 
That's that's really the problem. Like they need to kill creeps. The Luna and the Illusions just pushing side lanes all the time. It's slowly but surely just kind of choking them out of the game. They're not able to find as many opportunities to take fights because they have to worry about like mid one bought a male. Oh, they need this kill. They need this kill so badly. Yapsor ran into an invis FN and they got him. So they get a Reaper Scythe again. Not really that game changing by itself, but it's a drop in the bucket. <laughs> it's, it's a start. Thirsty as hell. It is. It is a start, and you need one at this point. You need heroes off the map, especially the heroes that kill the creep waves the fastest. So the Queen of Pain and the Luna are the two best at just shoving out the wave. With those off the map, that is probably the best thing that Seeker could hope for. Maybe killing Resolution is going to be a bit more. Uh, it'll make you feel a bit better. But I mean, God, how do you actually kill him? Butterfly, Scotty. BKB Lincoln's Manta. Yeah. I love his itemization in this game because a lot of the times you wouldn't see so many defensive items on Luna. You'd see at least one damage item or maybe a life steal or something like that. But this game, he understands his role. He's just a siege engine. He's a catapult cat. He just walks around and he just hits buildings. That's what he wants to do at this point. Wasn't there uh, Warcraft 3, the, the siege engines? Didn't they have that bouncing mechanism, the Night Elf one? The Night Elf one had the glaive, I think, that like pierced through stuff. Oh, like, okay. He would shoot yeah, it yeah. forward and it would like hit in a line in front of you. But yeah, yeah that's that's his role. Mm -hmm. And I, I still feel like his play in particular, FN has done a great job at recovering as much as he has. But a lot of that was just on the back of Resolution being the one who was applying most of the pressure during the mid game. Yeah. He was the one pushing the waves. You know, He was the one creating all that space and allowing FN to just kind of sit. A lot of the time, he was just farming the jungle. You don't see that very often on a queen. No. But his lane was so hard. <laughs> He's like, I don't want to ever go back mid. He's going to have, like, PTSD, even if they win this game, which... <laughs> He's probably telling his team, like, someone go mid for me, and then everybody's like, not, not me. He's like, don't make me go back there, guys. Don't make me go back. It's It was brutal. But yeah, Empire, just fantastic hold this game. The TP cancels on top lane, allowing them to counter racks, just bringing themselves back from the brink of defeat. First game here on uh, the TI stream number four. Definitely a doozy. So, uh, he just picked up the, the Scotty, right? That was his that was his pickup in, like, the last two minutes. Or, yeah, he got it after our most recent fight. And I think he also got level 25. I know he, I was watching him. He was pretty close to it earlier. So, that's, that's plus 40 to all stats that he didn't have before. Those illusions are going to be... Mid one's the only one who can kill him. Like, the, the Death Pulse yeah. doesn't really... It does some damage, but it's not super impressive by any means. And plus, if MP walks forward, he's just going to get chronoed. I mean, that's the really scary part. Mid one is the, the hero on secret who has the best chance of walking forward and not just instantly dying. What do you what do you do as secret here, right? You're always being pushed in with your lanes because you lost so many uh, barriers. You can't really team fight Team Empire here. Your game plan, you're in Puppy's chair right now, Draskal. What do you say to your team? What's our play? Well, you definitely need to be able to smoke. I think mid one has done the right thing by itemizing for the Mjolnir. It's necessary. Like, if you don't have this item on Viper, you just don't kill creeps fast enough. Mm -hmm. So you need to at least push out one lane, and then you need to try to go for, like, a YOLO smoke and maybe wrap around on Empire, find the back line first, try to kill the heroes that do the saving before they can do the saving. I mean, it's obviously easier said than done, but you can see Gapsor is drawing, like, a little squiggle on the map. He's like, I want to go around. I want to try to find them while they're not in the perfect siege position. Are you willing to use, say, Reaper's Scythe to cut down the Faceless Void? Oh, absolutely. Right, stop you want, the control is probably the scariest thing. Yeah. Because what happens a lot of the time during the fights is first Gostik will cast Chrono, and then Kezu will come in afterwards, and he'll be forced to Ravage. Like, he needs to after the Chrono comes out. But the problem was, when they were defending bottom, the two heroes that were in the actual Ravage range were bkb so he's just, he, he ravaged anyway, because, you know, you want to try to do something, but it just didn't end up being that effective. Right. So if you can get your spells off before BKBs are popped, before Chrono comes out, you absolutely Reaper a core. I think you have to. Secret, somehow, despite always being pushed in, not really having, I mean, at least they still have this Aghanim Scepter gem, so they do have some sort of vision advantage in these fights, but... They've got to find a way to be the initiators, right? They've got to be able to get a Ravage off before the BKBs go down. It's so hard, man. The Chronosphere. They do have some vision here. Yapsor spots a couple of heroes here. 
Rhyming forward with his Glimmer Cape, and they're gonna pop the Ravage here. BKB goes off first, so Kazu is gonna be the target of this Eclipse. Meanwhile, the Chronosphere does actually catch a couple of heroes. They manage to cut down the Shadow Demon. That's really worth it for the Chronosphere. He does manage to get off one Ravage, throws down a second one, controlling up Resolution beautifully. Can they bring him down, though? He's at half HP. Pops Manta, rips Kazu a Sundle. It looks like it doesn't even stand a chance. Secret just fall to all this physical damage that Resolution is putting out. He finally gets the kill off the mid one as the Lightning bounces it around. They do manage to kill several of these heroes and maybe even catch FN. They're Trying to chase him down They're now. Base the void. Oh no, the Lincolns. It wasn't up yet, but it looks like he still managed to get himself away. The base is under siege from all these super creeps. Fortunately, the Ranger X is still alive at only 97 HP. So even if Secret do win that fight, I'm not sure if they can force buybacks. I don't think they can force buybacks. Definitely not. I mean, they almost just lost their Ranger X to Illusions. <laughs> that That's not good. That Rex does not regenerate, as our good friend Grant, who did not make it to TI. <laughs> he would say un right, unhealable yeah. damage. Unhealable damage. Yeah, it's it's definitely rough. But all, that be, being said, the team fight actually went pretty darn well. They're not going to be able to find Yapsor here, but that was also the reveal of the refresher. Yeah. Right? They get the refresher ravage two times, comes out. They swap mid one into a position where he is just sitting as far away as possible, just blasting people. Like he is just hitting, and he has a lot of offensive items. Like, almost everything in his inventory helps him deal damage. So, in that case, it was like the ideal situation, right? You get your hero in the back line doing all the damage. The people that you want to die first kind of died first. And Kezu got his spells off. So, they may not have been able to force buybacks, but they did at least get the Roshan. They're going to get the Aegis for MP. Yapsor will look up the cheese. Certainly adds a lot. Now you don't have to worry about MP getting bursted down. Oh, look at FN. Yeah, he's going to go for it. Oh. Get <laughs> and I don't think they're even going to be able to kill him. Swap back. That's oh. going to help. Oh, doesn't actually blink over the cliff there. So he's going to be stunned up. The Reaper Sight, they tear. Oh. Yeah, they do bring him down. 120 seconds, That's but he so has worth buyback. It. That, is, that is certainly worth it because it's going to force Secret into a push, right? I don't think they can play the late game against Mega Creeps. Definitely not. I mean, unless Puppy wants to transition into a core and buy his own Maelstrom. <laughs> yeah, he needs a lot of items to get there. There is just so much lane pressure now being pushed the way of uh, Team Secret. They can't... It's really hard to get out on the map being like even a Rax or two down against the Luna lineup when they're able to just freely walk around the map. But being Megad is just an entirely different beast. Your supports can at least push out waves against super creeps. Right. Now they can't help you at all. You always got to be a core. So secret, about to go for the all in. They have to force this buyback out of the Queen of Pain and still make a successful team fight out of it. And they're also playing into buybacks. Like, yeah. Buybacks. The only only person on Empire that doesn't have buyback is the Shadow Demon. Everyone else has buyback. And that's that's typically what you see when you take, you know, a set of racks or two. In this case, they've obviously fully racks. Okay. Straight for the tier force, jump in. Ravage managed to catch uh, the support as well as resolution here. Sets up for the second Ravage, unable to get it off. This BKB goes down first, and that means with the controlling Chronosphere, they're going to be able to bring down both MP and mid one. Mid one gets swapped out. More damage on the ghost stick. He's surviving for a while, but eventually he does go down. Buyback, and let's see if he can boot to travel in onto Puppy. They kill Puppy, he won't make it in, but they do manage to get it out. Mid one fights up. Meanwhile, the Reaper Scythe goes down on resolution, but it's not enough. Mid one, he needed to help out on that damage, but he's He's not able to get there in time, so Resolution gets back to the base. Now it's just mid one and his two supports pushing into the three of Empire, who are able to play it slowly and play with the regen that the Fountain offers. One tier four is about to drop. FN comes for it. Just a little bit of poke here. Ghost Dick. No, oh, he's actually going to die. Okay, now it's a... It's uh, a 3v2, but Resolution's cap? also going for the throne. He's just going to straight for it, and their Lincoln's there to be able to stop the stun. They don't have enough damage to be able to bring this down. Resolution's just going to end the game, and Team Secret can't stop it. Resolution does find a way to just end it outright, but Secret, at least they made it one hell of a game towards the end there. My goodness, that was...